In the pasture over west, when cottonwood shimmer fills the air, the lizard in me wants to rest up on a silvered fence post. There, twitchless between red dirt and sky, I'd blend into the wind-carved wood. Let the dark bird circle, try not to blink until the hood of stretching shadows catches me, open mouth in the hay green breeze. Looming blue mountain gravity draws down the sun, darkens the trees. And that was an end of day poem. Um, this next one's about daybreak at one of my favorite places in Orange County, Fremont Canyon on the old Irvine Ranch. Um, the Irvine Ranch used to take up about 100,000 acres, which is about a third of present-day Orange County. And I'm a hiking docent with the Irvine Ranch Conservancy, and so I get to take people out to these areas that are close to the general public, um, but I get to see them up close. Valley of Shadow, morning in Fremont Canyon. Shade damp and chill and still, but cozy with mule fat. Oh, sweet green musk that resurrects memories of creeks now dry. Here, the arroyo tapers. Carved sandstone walls show off geomorphic trauma and rosettes of silver dudlia. First light strikes the rim, transfigures the high dry grass, summons a canyon wren's cascade of song. It is the beginning of the beginning. The sycamore crowns break next into a gold chorus. So I'm from the city of Orange, but when I'm out of state and people ask me where I'm from, I usually say Orange County near Disneyland, and they smile and nod and hint for, you know, they can come and stay for a while. Um, but I wish when people ask where I was from, I could say Orange County near the wild foothills of the Santa Ana Mountains, and they'd be even more eager to stay with me. But that's a dream. Um, but my next poem is called Foothill Fugitives. The hills outside my city once were hideouts for horse thieves and assorted bandits who escaped into the maze of sycamore or got caught and hung around for good. Before them, native people were intimate with the dense chaparral whose labyrinths hid cottontails, acorns, roots, wildflowers, sweet springs that dripped down secret walls of fern. While new heel wounds scab over into clumps of houses, past the scars remain long ridges that poke the sky and puncture winter's heavy cloud burdens seething in from the Pacific. A web of gates and fences restrict access to a public ignorant of oak seduction, immune to sagebrush buzz, numb to the slithering of, oops, numb to the rush of lizards slithering beneath their feet, folks who'd rather hang with Mickey Mouse. I'm looking for an open trail to steal away on steep with rocks and poison oak. And around the next turn, a road runner. Weir Canyon Stories, uh, my next poem, retells some old tales from a 1948 book on Orange County history called The Shadows of Old Saddleback by Terry Stevenson. You can find a Weir Canyon exit off the 91 freeway in Orange County. But before there was a 91 freeway or in Orange County, there was Weir Canyon, um, or Cañada de los Bueyes, which is the way that people in the inland areas, um, in the desert areas, used to get to the coast. And I hope this poem makes clear why it's called Cañada de los Bueyes, Canyon of the Oxen. Weir Canyon stories. Graffiti-covered Robbers Peak, the high point of my hike, stands northeast of town and overlooks a canyon filled with ancient oaks and stories. Shady is the Cañada de los Boyas, Canyon of the Oxen, perhaps named after wayward beasts which strayed from the Yorba Rancho, 1820. They might have grazed a day or two on tufts of nodding needle grass before the placid pair was found by Indian vaqueros riding hard under the oaks past the old mortreros. How many generations squatted here, grinding acorns on that massive boulder, before their life changed course like the Santa Ana River after a month of winter rain. That's a story subject to interpretation, like those squint-eyed tales of treasure buried in purview of Robber's Peak. Big Hat Banditos, Stagecoach Gold, the Los Boyes' busy two-track road made a shortcut from the desert to the coast. What fortune had rested in that empty hole found by the Squire's Boy in 1880 above the sandy mouth of Los Boyes? Fresh dirt still clung to the wormy ox yoke, which must have marked the spot, the boy insisted. 
Someone had stolen there by night and dug up his arroyo. And now it's my place. We're Canyon, Cañada de los Bueyes. Names turn relic like the fire-scarred oaks here on the edge of yesterday's old Irvine Ranch. And my eroded robber's peak, I own it too. It's where I catch my breath on hikes to get away above OC to float eye level with the turkey vultures. When the chaparral exploded in flames, laurel sumac and scrub oak charred into skeletons, did wood rats and pocket mice cower in the prickly pear, its spiny pads wrinkled by months without rain, what skittery whiptail lizard was quicker than wind gusts of 60 dry miles per hour? Maybe gophers and snakes burrowed together when the hot breath above made everything prey. Takati cypress, like sticks of incense, stood smoldering over a charcoal landscape as churning gray billows choked the nation's TV screens. Orange County was famous again today. What does reincarnation mean? A cowpoke asked his friend. His pal replied, it happens when your life has reached its end. They comb your hair and wash your neck and clean your fingernails and lay you in a padded box away from life's travails. The box and you goes in a hole that's been dug into the ground. Reincarnation starts in when you're planted neath a mound. Them clods break down just like your box and you who is inside and then you're just beginning on your transformation ride. In a while, some grass will grow upon your rendered mound, till one day on your moldered grave a lonely flower is found. And say a hoss should wander by and graze upon that flower which once was you but now has become your vegetative bower. That posy that the hoss done ate up with his other feed makes bones and fat and muscle essential to the steed. But some is left that he can't use. And so it passes through and finally lays upon the ground this thing that once was you. And says by chance, I happens by and sees this upon the ground, and I ponders and I wonders at this object that I found. I thinks of reincarnation, of life and death and such, and come away concluding, Slim, you ain't changed all that much. <laughs> Manurehappens.com um, publicized it would give a free bumper sticker if, you, if they published your poem about manure. So I wrote it. They published it. <laughs> I got the bumper sticker. It's too good for my car. My car is not worthy of that. So this is my last poem, Ode to a Road Apple. Here, without using chemicals, I play the hand that nature deals. My garden's where an earthworm feels secure. Sky-high corn and these tomatoes dwarf their tough skin, tasteless kin, those gene-spliced mutants at the grocery store. If I shared my little secret, it might spoil your will to eat, yet also give you food for thought if you're unsure. I use fertilizer so fine from the south end of my equine friends installed outside the city. Horse manure. Gardener's gold I load and pile it, mix and stir and wait, and while it cooks, I test it every smelly couple days. Plunge my hand into the steaming, reeking middle. What's it needing? More air? More water? One more week, the odor says. Manure compost on the side as a brown blanket makes like Midas. Everything it touches turns to veggie gold. Green bean vines devour their trellis. Rabid zucchini overwhelm us. Manure turns timid turnips into bold. So try a healthy spinach sample, courtesy of horses' ample capacity for pelletizing hay. And if it messes up your thinking to be eating what was stinking, think how you might recycle too someday. Thank <laughs> you.